What's going on guys and welcome to a new video. Today I want to share a quick tip around ordering text columns in Power BI. This is something that plagues me quite often as, to my knowledge, Power BI has no way to create a custom ordering for a column. It is a shame, I hope that changes in the future, but for now I've got a plan for those of you who are struggling with it. We're going to use this for two visualizations today, so let's get stuck in. So I'm looking at some store data here, and one of the columns we have is called employee group. This is basically a banding for the amount of employees that work in a particular store. Now I've created this column myself for this video, but this is the sort of thing you'll find in your data on a regular basis. I find the age range is the most common of these types of column, but there are many other examples out there. Plus this tip can also be used for categorical data, where you might not want the ordering to be alphabetical. To show you the issue with these columns more clearly, I'm just going to create a quick matrix here. We'll put in the employee group that we've just seen and also the sales amount for that employee group. Now if I just double check that this is sorted by that employee group, make sure it's ascending, we'll see that while that matrix is completely functional, the ordering isn't what you might expect, with the 100 plus band sitting above the 10 to 29 band. This is because we're dealing with text data. Power BI doesn't care that the number 100 is bigger than the number 10. In fact, it doesn't even notice a number at all, just a string of text that starts with the number 1. So it places it alongside the 10 to 29 band, which of course also starts with a number 1. So to get around this problem, we need to find an alternative to order by. Fortunately, we can generate one by either by using a calculator column or a measure. In this case, I'm going to use a measure. This will utilize the switch function in an unusual way. So if you're not familiar with the switch function, I'd recommend watching my video on it, which I'll link below. So let's create a new measure. And let's call it employee group sort. Let's use the switch function. And as we're creating a measure, we need some form of summarizing as part of the formula. This means that we need to use switch true with an open and close bracket. Now we're going to use the max function to summarize the column by. I'd have to go into details about filter context as to why this will work. That will be covered in another video. But ultimately, max will always return the correct banding in this example. So let's use max here and pull through employee group. Close that bracket. And if that's equal to less than 10, let's give it a value of 1. I'm just going to quickly copy and paste a few more of these. Let's just have five and put in those commas. Close that bracket. Now we want this one to be compared to 10 to 29. This one to 30 to 49. This one to 50 to 99. And finally, this one to be 100 plus. And what we're going to do here is set these to be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So if we press enter, We can then add this employee group sort to the matrix. We can see that we essentially have a numerical value for each band that we had before. If we then order the matrix by this employee group sort, we see that this is now ordered correctly. From here, all we need to do is take that employee group sort and just reduce the width of it until it disappears. And it's like it's not even there at all and that everything in this matrix is now ordered correctly. We can also do this for other visualizations, such as a bar chart. In this case, it would need to be a stacked bar chart. All we need to do if we just create this, we'll pull in the employee group, we will pull in the sales amount, we will also pull in that employee group sort. 
I just make this a little bigger here. All we then need to do, again, is sort by that employee group sort. Set that to be ascending. From here, all we need to do is just remove the legend so that you can't see that employee group sort is part of it. And we would also adjust that title as well. In fact, I'll just remove that very quickly. And we see that that's now ordered correctly. If you find that the values assigned are interfering in your chart, for example, if you're looking at much smaller figures than I am here, you can just use smaller numbers in the sort column. So for example, you could use 0.0001 to 0.0005, where I've put one to five. It should still work absolutely fine and would be much more suitable for smaller values. So that's it for today's video. As always, leave me a like if you enjoyed it and let me know if it's something you'll use going forward. But for now guys, I'll see you in the next video.